Good day. Thanks for participating. Thanks to IIED for organizing this workshop. I'm sorry I can't be there in person. I'd be happy to answer questions by email, though. Today I'll introduce the idea of ocean accounts that we've been developing together with IIED, UN Environment, and many, many other partners. This infographic shows the main components of our Ocean Accounts Partnership to strengthen governance, data, and statistics for SDG 14. By integrating data across physical conditions, pollutants, ecosystems, and livelihoods into a coherent platform, by conducting research on ocean cities, plastics, and governance approaches to accelerate implementation of SDG 14, we have a unique basis for stimulating action to foster sustainable use of the ocean. The partnership is based on the positive feedback loop between evidence and action, using available evidence to inform decisions, and understanding what evidence is needed to make better decisions. This is true for all domains, but information on the ocean is even more fragmented across sectors, sciences, and agencies. So there is a role for ocean accounts. Why do we talk about accounts? You may have heard of natural capital accounting. Our natural capital is a shared asset that, if we treat it properly, provides ongoing services. It's not only monetary information we're accounting for, we can apply the accounting approach to spatial and other physical data and to governance. Systems people work with stocks and flows. Governance people talk about accountability. So we're all becoming accountants. The principle is to take a holistic conceptual view and to put what we know into an integrated account. This has worked very well for economic and social data, and we're making progress on environmental data with land, water, energy, waste, and ecosystem accounts. A few other principles are needed, stocks and flows, spatial data infrastructures, units of measure, and valuation methods, among others. Putting fragmented data into an account also helps identify inconsistencies and gaps in the data and policies. We have an international statistical standard to help us make sure things are consistent. The System of Environmental Economic Accounting, the SIA. That's me on the top of the first E. We're not making this up. The System of National Accounts, the SNA, has been in place for over 70 years. The SIA has been applied for about 25 years. Small-scale fisheries, the value of the ocean economy, IUU should be in the SNA, but it's not often counted. All countries have an SNA. The SIA can be used to track fish stocks, harvesting and use, wastes, but it's not often done subnationally. About 70 countries use parts of the SIA. Uh, waste, water, energy, and land accounts are among the most common. SIA ecosystems can be used to track ecosystem types, their conditions and services, but this hasn't been well tested for marine ecosystems. About 15 countries are working on SIA ecosystem accounts. We still need, need to do some work to fill in the rest of SDG 14. Small scale fishers are beneficiaries of ecosystem services. They depend on a healthy ocean and fair markets, and we're working on this part. Definitions around technology, governance, and management practices also need some work. We're looking for partners to conduct national ocean accounts pilots to test the overall approach and to help us develop technical guidance on how to apply what we already know to the unique issues of the ocean. National pilots will initially focus on one or two high priority issues. The problem hasn't been so much the lack of data, but the lack of a blueprint to select, standardize, and analyze the data. We suggest focusing on a subset or of core ocean statistics that most countries will find useful to inform their planning. Ocean accounts is the beginning of that blueprint. The green here is from the SEA Central Framework. We can use that to measure our drivers, the waste, the water emissions, air emissions, the blue here is from SEA ecosystems, the ocean asset, the biotic and abiotic and their conditions, including how they are used. This is like land cover and land use for terrestrial ecosystems. You can also use this to track the ocean services supply and use in physical and monetary terms. 
The orange part here is from the system of national accounts. We can use this to measure the value of the ocean economy. And as I said, there's much undercounting going on here. The purple parts are the governance structures and activities such as expenditures to manage and the technologies that are already in place. We found with ecosystem accounting that maps and tables need to inform each other. We can integrate existing data, land-based pollution, ecosystems, water quality, designated use, according to spatial standards. We can create tables from these maps and maps from the tables. We're working with partners to identify and integrate global data according to the Ocean Accounts Framework. This global data will also support the national pilots. We've been working with a few countries already. Thailand is piloting the framework to inform planning for sustainable tourism. We're assessing ecosystem carrying capacity, resource requirements, impacts of tourism, and unexploited tourism potential. Samoa is working with us to prepare for integrated marine spatial planning, that is allocating parts of the ocean to different uses such as tourism, fishing, and conservation. Indonesia is considering developing a systematic approach to designating marine protected areas given the uniqueness, sensitivity, and services provided. China is investigating adapting their terrestrial approach to ecosystem valuation to the ocean in terms of physical and monetary valuation. Malaysia and Vietnam have committed to pilots but have not yet determined the focus. So what does it all mean for small-scale fisheries? Existing statistical standards, the SNA, industrial classifications, SIA, etc., can be applied to analyze small-scale fisheries or other ocean-related concerns. There may not be a need to re reinvent the wheel. These standards are used for many purposes and provide a means of linking to other national and international work. For example, if a country is already working on SIA ecosystems, ocean accounts are a natural extension. Their feedback will also help improve the standards. When we need new definitions and classifications, agreeing on those globally will ensure a common approach to supporting countries. Using common definitions also helps with international comparisons. Many people don't think of the national statistical system as providing anything but what they put on their web pages. And by national statistical system, we mean that all people in national statistical agencies and units within line departments that are responsible for providing statistics. They are in fact quite interested in improving the relevance of their information. They could improve their surveys and registers, they can add detail to the system of national accounts and support the implement implementation of SIA and ocean accounts. Many are already doing this, but it takes a bit of time. Survey cycles may take a year or two, Funding, capacity building, technical assistance may be needed, but that's what we do. We can provide that support. There's a story behind the elephant and the whale. The elephant represents the components of SIA ecosystems. The whale represents the ocean accounts, and we're trying to get them to talk to each other. So thanks for listening. Feel free to contact me, and have a good day.